once we get to that flood warning status, it's inevitable that CDOT would have that safety closure in place, and that's exactly what happened. We were under a flash flood watch previously, and you can see a little bit of lightning as we look eastbound along I-70 through Debec Canyon towards uh, eastern Garfield County, where uh, what we're talking about is the Grizzly Creek burn scar. Now, on radar, it's some action happening right now. We're getting some lightning strikes. About 20 minutes ago, I was looking at some hail signatures on radar, so uh, this is a rather intense storm. It's slow moving. That's really the complicated problem is that it's not moving all that quickly, so it's saturating the grounds right above the interstate, right above this entire canyon area, and it's steep. And of course, being that it's a burn scar, there's no vegetation to hold back anything. So we're going to be monitoring the situation closely. As I said, it went from a watch to a warning, and that's an immediate safety closure by CDOT. And of course, uh, we are just getting started with these showers. Some of these storms could go a little bit late through the night, but this particular flash flood warning for the Grizzly Creek burn scar, that goes until 1030. So at the very minimum, with no complications from a debris flow, at the very minimum, this interstate is going to be closed through 10 o'clock hour. I'll have more. Stay right there. Russ, tell us more. You know, I want to I want to reference that debris flow story about the river you're just talking about. You know, one of the primary reasons the burn scars are so so complicated is because once you burn all that all that vegetation, then you've got a hard layer of soil and then you have steep terrain so that water cannot permeate through that hard layer. So it just rushes right down and then it's not done because yes, we get these closures. Yes, we get these debris flows over the roadways. Yes, we have currently Interstate 70 closed right now. A little concerned about Highway 82 in the Roaring Fork Valley, also a little further west at parachute concern there, but these debris flows get into the river and debris moves further downstream. And then if you get a narrow section of the river, then all of a sudden that river can get choked or jammed up. And then you could create another flooding situation just because that water can't move anymore because of all that debris piling up further downstream in areas where there aren't even any rain showers. So yeah, debris flows and burn scars, that's not a fun situation. And these, of course, were all occurring last summer. So we're still going to be dealing with this right now. As Lena Takata just said, we have no estimated time of reopening on Interstate 70, but we still have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all of next week to continue with these on again, off again closures. Now, <coughs> I'd be remiss if I did not mention we're still under an air quality health advisory through tomorrow morning. It's in the lungs, this light smoke. Now, the, that thicker smoke's further to the east, but still, when you're outside all day, weeks, what, two weeks now, it, it wears on your lungs. So it, take precaution if you're outside tomorrow, just like we've been all week. Our mornings are hot, our mornings are muggy, our afternoons are stormy, and therein lies the problem, especially today. Highlighted in green, you know these are flood watches. That means the ingredients are in place. Highlighted in neon green or maroon red. Neon green is an advisory. That's an active flooding situation. This is the Roan Cliffs right around Parachute right now. They're getting some heavy downpours. There's also a Mount Logan right there as well, probably contributing to the chaos. You get into the Glenwood Canyon. This is a safety closure for I-70, and I just found the reports. Several debris flows right there in the canyon. This is going to be an extended closure, no estimated time of reopening. And then to complicate matters further, if you're local traffic from westbound, you're going to use Highway 82 to get to El Jebel, Basalt, Carbondale. Well, that area is under a flash flood warning right now, and that's steep terrain. Likely that could create some debris flow. So very complicated situation. All of our storms are not moving very fast. Let's jump into radar and see what's going on for now. The Grand Valley and the Uncompahgre Valley, quiet. We have clouds all around us. It's inevitable we will see some showers later tonight. I'm thinking post sunset and then lingering through midnight. At the very least, we're going to be breezy again tonight through the midnight hour, but we have storms that are going to be on the move. In fact, the storms right now, which the Genesis site are the mountains, the mesas and the plateaus. A lot of activity around Parachute, around Debec, around Colburn as well. Rifle just letting up, Meeker letting up, but Glenwood Canyon, Carbondale, the Roaring Fork Valley, very active weather in those areas and heavy downpours. I was analyzing the radar. Now you see the lightning strikes, but what you don't see are the very hot pink colors. That's hail. That's radar indicated hail, and those are falling in the higher elevations. Nothing is falling 
Delta Olathe Montrose. Nothing is falling in the Grand Valley, but we have the potential tonight. We will have storms moving through the region and we will kick up our winds. These storms are producing not only lightning, but gusty winds. So we're talking on the order of 35 to 45 mile per hour wind speeds. Later tonight, breezy. So we will be feeling about a 20 to 25 mile per hour breeze. Not typical after sunset, but during this summer thunderstorm pattern, we call it the North American monsoon. Well, our high pressure system centered over the Four Corners region. That's contributing to all the activity that we have right now. Dove Creek, Cortez, a little bit active. Now the high pressure system will start to fade to the east a little bit. That's not a sign of relief. That's an amplified sign. So we're going to get a lot more showers and thunderstorms during the weekend and into the start of next week because of that repositioning of the high pressure system. Take a look at the high temperatures because while we finish each day stormy with complicated flooding issues, we start each day hot. We start each day muggy as well. So by noon, those mountain sites, the mesas, the plateaus, those storms are going to bubble up into the clouds. Now this weekend, if you're thinking about bagging some 14ers, some 13ers, even getting up to 12,000 feet above timberline, not advisable because those storms are not going to wait until noon. They're going to fire up a little bit earlier in the day. So an alpine start, which is pre-dawn, may not cut it. Now, don't be fooled. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, Grand Junction, that sunshine it still represents a pretty good shot of afternoon and evening storms. For Montrose, that shot of afternoon and evening storms continues through tomorrow, through this weekend, and into next week under that new high-pressure position. So we, we reported earlier that the I-70 closure has been extended. The flash flood warning has been extended by an hour. Why? Why is that? Do you know? Are you talking to me? Oh, yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> of course you are. Well, yeah, we still have storms in the area. We're still very active in Garfield County <laughs> with these little isolated cells. This is subtropical, so there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. There's a lot of potential for heavy downpours, and that's exactly what we're getting. We're getting these heavy downpours. Is this part of that monsoon season, sir, that we're, we're, we're hoping to really get a lot more of? Absolutely. This is part of the North American monsoon. It was it was a no soon last summer. We didn't even <laughs> see any showers. This year, we're getting more showers and it's more prevalent. Even though Grand Junction's on the northern periphery of this North American monsoon and we rarely get it, when we do, it's beautiful. And with that, expect more of these closures on I-70. It's inevitable that we're going to get these flood watches and it's inevitable that we'll get them upgraded to a warning just like tonight. Great information. Certainly something we'll keep following for Russ, Lena, and myself, and Mike Kretz, wherever he is. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.